Deputy Minister Mfaketo, can we, you want us to start? You'll tell us, Leon. Yeah, I'll tell. All right, welcome back, everybody. As I promised you, and I have been promising you, we've moved back into, into the auditorium where the heads of missions have gathered, and we're going to speak to a couple of them because there's so many interesting aspects of the work that's done by the heads of missions in their respective countries. You know, as we were talking about it outside, and I did find that conversation so interesting, is that this is one of those departments where you actually are never too aware of the work that's being done because it's not necessarily being done here in South Africa. It's work that's being done outside side of the country. So we have the representatives here um, and we want to talk to a couple of them and some of the themes that we're going to be picking on uh, will be a, a lot of them but the one we're going to start off with is peacekeeping missions because uh, South Africa is present in a lot of countries that are unfortunately plagued by uh, whether it be war or just impoverishment or whatever it may be and we have these embassies there and how do they serve, how do they work and how do they help the country that they're represented in. So I've got the minister who's actually going to help Help me to pinpoint some of the minister. I'm going to ask you to just pick up your microphone yes. as well, if you can speak into it. Yes. This is our first sort of point of call because I know we have South Sudan, who is represented here as well. Yes. Well, I thought before you go to South Sudan, we can pick up South Sudan when we have time. Uh, can we just quickly just give uh, Deputy Minister Mfekato a minute and uh, Ambassador Benefel so that we contextualise global politics a little bit. Thank you very much, Leanne. Um, I, I work in Middle East and Asia, and I'm sure the question was more about Syria. We have an ambassador who will elaborate, but just to say as somebody who went to Syria in May this year, in the middle of what we had as a middle of uh, war, um, coming from the Lebanon side, definitely Damascus people are going about doing their business. It doesn't mean there's no war somewhere, but my experience is that of Syrian people, government and opposition, that are under siege, who said to me openly, with our experience as South Africa, they want us to help. They want peace. At the moment, they are held hostage to paid mercenaries that have occupied just 25% of Aleppo, which is made in the narrative as a big, big human rights issue that is caused by the government of Syria. That is my experience. But I'm sure the ambassador there who live day and night would be able to elaborate on that. Lovely. Ambassador, if you'd like to add to it, we'll just um, pass the microphone across to you. There we go. Thank you, Ambassador. No, thank you very much. I think the first point to be made is that the global power paradigm seems to be adjusting. One is not absolutely certain as to where all of this might be taking us to, but Syria seems to be in part at least about that kind of a reality, a changing world. And it seems to me as if several interests are active in Syria that are not necessarily the interests of the Syrian population themselves. It would be very interesting for I think South Africans to engage with Syrians pretty directly in terms of where they would want to see Syria go. And I think this is where South Africa in particular features very strongly. Syrians have a lot of confidence in South Africa. Syrians have a lot of confidence in our transition model. Syrians have a lot of confidence in our ability to grow peace. Syrians have a lot of confidence in our ability to build and to develop. 
South Africa is a country that is hugely connected, is a country that is well grounded, and it is a country with huge expertise and huge experience. Syrians seem to recognize and to acknowledge that. We've been active in Syria in terms of reconciliation efforts. We are engaging government, we are engaging um, local peace assets, community peace builders, we are engaging opposition formations in Syria. You actually have Syrians investing in South Africa. So even in a time of conflict, there's still an ability to do business in aid of South Africa's interests. And this is certainly what we are seeking to do, not only in Syria, but globally. I'm very fortunate for having been granted the opportunity to serve in Syria, and I think South Africans are fortunate, given our own experience, to be able to engage in Syria. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador. So it's good to be hearing about some of the uh, peace processes. And I mean, when you talk about Syria, I think that's uh, it, it, you're really giving us an idea as to the, the work that we're involved in. I want to move on to the continent now as well and talk. Uh, we've been alluding to South Sudan. We've got the ambassador that uh, represents South Africa in South Sudan. Um, and Lesotho. And Lesotho as well together. Excellent. So, I mean, we've got great relations with Lesotho. Let's, let's get an idea. I'm going to ask you both very, very quickly to give us an understanding of the work that's being done in those African countries. We'll start with South Sudan. Uh, Leon, thank you very much. Uh, I'd also like to thank the minister who has articulated that uh, South Africa wants to... It's interested in peace, security, and development. Uh, I wouldn't like to get into the history of South Sudan, but I would like to point the fact that uh, where we are at the moment, the situation in South Sudan is very sad. Said in a sense that uh, we never anticipated what has happened on the 7th to the 10th of July this year. Ourselves, we have deployed within the United Nations mission in South Sudan, UNMIS. We have our South African police services officials in South Sudan. And I must quickly say that the government of South Sudan looks upon South Africa because of our experiences, because of our historical uh, link with the the SPLM in South Sudan. And up to now, Leanne, we have uh, trained, South Africa has trained almost 2,000 South Sudanese. That started from 2003. We are busy now even trying to resuscitate those programs so that we can further to, uh, capacitate the people of South Sudan. We are also engaged within the, the framework of party-to-party uh, -party relations with, uh, with the South Sudanese because they are aware of the fact that the experience that we had, we can uh, contribute positively to, to the status quo in South Sudan. The ruling parties of both countries, they're, in, they're talking to each other on the basis of reunifying the, 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 the party in South Sudan, because as the government of South Africa, after 2013, we realized the problem where it started, started within the party itself. And if we can get the party together, then we'll be in a position to implement the peace agreement that has been signed as we're talking now. Fantastic. Let's talk Lesotho now because, you know, and I, and I don't think it could actually come at a better time. I and mean, when you look at the, the drought that South Africa is struggling with and the agreements and some of the ministerial levels that it's gone to, where we're wanting, of course, to expand this full-blown water resource within Lesotho to the entire region, South Africa, Botswana, Namibia. I mean, th this is all international relations. These are something I imagine you would be a part and parcel of. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Indeed, South Africa continues to be involved in Lesotho. The SADC mediation through our deputy president. As, as we speak now, the oversight committee will be taking position on the ground and they're going to be continuing to monitor the peace and uh, security in Lesotho. And we hope that immediately the oversight committee starts its operations, peace will be restored again in Lesotho. All right, I'm going to unfortunately have to leave it there just for now, but thank you for giving us a little bit of an insight as to what's happening. Um, we're going to take a, a, a break from here, but before we do that, I need to involve uh, the viewers that are watching at home. Do we have a representative from Italy here? Uh, anybody that represents Italy in the audience? No? 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 Okay, well, that's unfortunate. 
because I can tell you one thing, you're getting a, a very big compliment coming from a viewer that's watching saying, my, my doctor's son went missing in Italy. The South African diplomats and the embassy worked tirelessly with sleepless nights and they found him. And we thank you, please stand up. Okay. Our, our ambassador in uh, Italy is um, um, Ambassador Tambo. Good. Who's uh, a, a little bit unwell, but she's done. She's doing a sterling, sterling job. Fantastic. Representing South Africa. Well, we we are hearing well. that, and thank that's a, that's a viewer writing into us yes. to tell us. But Leon, I'm I'm so humbled that you also included my beloved. I would call them cadets. Yes up and coming young diplomats listening to their speeches i was feeling very jealous as to why didn't were they, why were they not given an opportunity to speak in the presence of the president we are about not only being pathfinders but also championing an independent foreign policy that is informed by human rights peace security and growing our own economy using our young people as the most precious resource, including our land, as we industrialize and beneficiate our mineral resources. Thanks very much, Minister. We'll continue this conversation. It's eight o'clock here on Morning Live. Let's get the main news bulletin. Palessa, it's over to you.